So this is what I, I said. There is another, this is the focus of, uh, of this talk. So the first one is reduce the number of alerts. Basically, we, we take alerts and we look if they are similar or not. It, and there is a second that we are interested here, is, is to detect coordinated or complex attacks. Because intrusion detection systems only detect simple alert that concern just one event. In general, intruders may use several actions in some sequence, some predefined sequence, to reach, to reach some objective intrusion. Not just one action, but several actions to reach. Even if each action can be detected, but, but the whole set of actions cannot be detected by intrusion detection systems. This is the second task of uh, the second objectives of uh, alert correlation tools. But the first objective is try to reduce the set of alert. The second objective is to try to detect whether these some actions belong to some scenarios that aim at the end to detect some complex to, to, to reach some objective intrusion. So this is the focus of, uh, of this talk. So this is the second, uh, obje this is the second objective. Let's first briefly say a few words of uh, most used approach to detect coordinated attacks. And its limitation has motivated this work. I mean, why we need to use data mining tools. It's very, the, the approach is very intuitive. However, it's not realistic. It's very, very intuitive. It simply says that we define a scenario. What is a scenario? Just a sequence of actions. So very, then each action, action, we try to define it. It, it. it has three components. The first name, just the name of the action. The second, preconditions. Preconditions are the set of, condi of conditions. If they are true, the action can be executed. If, if one of these conditions is not true, the action, cannot, the action cannot be executed. This is very simple. Necessary conditions that allow the action to be executed. But it's possible to be executed. Then post condition is, if the action is, cons is executed, is run, what are the consequences on the system? What are things that will be changed? This is what, this is exactly, each action will say, what are necessary conditions to be executed first, then if it's executed, what are the consequences on the information system? What things that will be changed? It's very, very simple. For instance, if there is a buffer overflow, it's one of attack regarding a tool, one known tool set mean, which is used by network administrator, there are some parameters just needed to define preconditional post conditions. Then preconditions means that there is some host, and this host contains some vulnerability to set mean. So this is conditions. If these two conditions are satisfied, and the action is executed, then the post condition is that that we will get root access to the victim. This is, this is the consequences. So all actions write in this way. Now, when these actions are defined, are specified, sorry, then we define a sequence of action in terms of graph. We use symbolic correlation definition as follows. We say that some action, for instance, A1, is correlated to some action of A2. If the execution of A1, namely if A1 is executed, then it allows the intruder to perform A2. Namely, A1 has some positive influence on A2. Now, if we go back to the precondition and postcondition, how this is specified, it simply means that if one of the postcondition of A1 is present 
in one of preconditions of A2, then we say that A1, A1, if one of the preconditions, sorry, if one of the preconditions of A1, postcondition of A1, is present on one of preconditions of A2, then this means that maybe the execution of A1 is done in a way that A2 can be performed. Because I recall that A2, the preconditions means the necessary conditions that allow A2 to be executed. So maybe A1, the intruder execute A1 such that A2 can be executed, and so on. So this is a, so uh, of course, one of problem of, as I said, one of the problem of intrusion detection systems, there are attacks that are not detected. This is why we use some virtual actions. Namely, if some A3, for instance, has not been observed, however, the world scenario is observed, then we add A3 as a virtual alert, which means that the, the, the system has missed this action. So let's see the limit limitations of this. The first limitation is that it needs a large amount of expert knowledge, really large amount of expert knowledge, and we have seen it in experimental data. It's very simple because each action of the system, you need to define what are precondition and postcondition. This is absolutely not realistic. I mean, we can imagine, for instance, for some system like Unix, there are a limited set of commands. Okay, we can try to define our precondition, postcondition. However, each, each, I mean, each day, uh, one ha built his proper software, his proper tool, and it's it's not realistic to say, okay, what are preconditions and what are postconditions? It's not realistic at all. And this, uh, and the story is that it's uh, we need also there is also a way to specify precondition and postcondition and what what to what is needed in precondition and what is needed in postconditions. Especially if you say, for instance, okay, for, ins for instance, for given some command, you say, I need to, uh, should I put uh, the, uh, the operating systems like Linux or Windows inside precondition or not? Just a, a question. So if you, if, if, you, if you put it, then you will get too many scenarios because everything will be correlated. If you decide to not put it, you may miss some scenarios. It's not always easy to say what are minimal conditions that I should put in preconditions. And you always have to, as I said, you always have to find some compromise between precise specifications, very, very precise specifications, and general specifications. General specifications leads to many scenarios. And precise may miss some scenarios, that's the point. And one of the main limitation is that the number of scenarios, because when it starts, you, you, you like to predict if this sequence, we observe some sequence of actions, whether the sequence of action belongs to some scenario, and which scenario. What is the aim of the intruder? And then to predict what is the aim of the intruder, we have to explore all possibilities and then wait if this is confirmed or not. Exploring all possibilities give you a huge number of scenarios. It's a very huge number of, of possible scenarios because there are many actions that can match, and if since there are many actions that can match, there are plenty of scenarios. So it's not possible to predict, and we miss, uh, we miss an important feature is to predict this possible scenario. So.